The Dodgers made the move. They got Jack Flaherty. You are Locked On Dodgers, your daily Los Angeles Dodgers podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. We've seen the Dodgers take it past the deadline before in terms of when we found out news. And they almost got to that point on Tuesday. But uh, just before the deadline, we got the news that the Dodgers made the move for a starting pitcher. And they got the best starting pitcher traded at the deadline. Yeah. he. You know, we talked yesterday. Flaherty might have been third on our list of maybe even fourth if you talk about the unrealistic option of Blake Snell. But, you know, uh, Garrett Crochet, Tarek Skubal, obviously Skubal would have been number one. Uh, Crochet has the upside. But Flaherty, like you said, those other guys didn't get traded. Flaherty was absolutely up there on our list of the, the guy of the guys likely to be traded. He was there at the top of the list of who we wanted. And realistically, this was always going to come down to the last minute. Uh, when you know that you know there had been reports the Yankees and Red Sox were also in the bidding for Flaherty, uh, who knows? There, you never know if those reports are true. But the Tigers, it made sense for them to draw out the bidding until the last minute. The crazy thing was, after all drawing out that bidding, setting up a bidding war, all that stuff, what the Dodgers had to send to the Tigers to get Flaherty was remarkably uh, less than I had feared. Yeah, you look at. You say Kikuchi to the Astros last night, and you know they sent out what was considered a haul by people that know prospects a lot better than than we do. When you see what the Padres gave up for a rental and reliever in Tanner Scott earlier in the day, uh, and they gave up three of their of their top ten prospects, not top ten in baseball, but of their top ten prospects, and then you see the Dodgers and they didn't give up. And they get they traded from death with Tyron Liranzo, the catcher getting traded, and then they traded a guy that they got for a reliever in the offseason and Trey Sweeney, who wasn't gonna hit enough to really play shortstop for the Dodgers, anyways. And you know, if, if you can find you can find a lot of glove first, no hitting shortstops out there in the world. We've seen it this year with Nick Ahmed getting picked up, you know, off his couch a couple uh, or last week. So yeah, it, for what it cost, for what other teams paid. It really does seem like, you know, the Tigers either really, really, really like these guys or they just maybe they felt like the old one, like after Eduardo Rodriguez kind of played the Dodgers last year. Maybe they're like, you know what, let's just get the deal done. Yeah. And to be fair, there's a lot to like about Lorenzo. I think Lorenzo is a very good hitter. We don't know if he's going to be a catcher long term or a first baseman. And that's a big a big difference when it comes to the defensive spectrum and overall value. If he if he's not a catcher, he's you know, a, a power hitting first baseman. If he's a power hitting catcher, that's, you know, potential to be very valuable. But in the end, like we, we set ourselves up. We've kind of been, we knew the Dodgers had to make some moves. They had holes they need to fill. And we knew it was going to be a seller's market because the playoff format uh, has changed things. So there aren't as many selling teams. So we had kind of prepared ourselves. It's going to be painful. There's going to be names that we really like that leave the the organization. And in the end, the two biggest names that left the organization were Miguel Vargas and Tyrone Lorenzo, who, you know, Vargas, we talked about him yesterday, didn't have a place on the Dodgers, love Vargas, happy for him, no pain at all for him leaving the Dodgers. And Lorenzo, down down the line a couple of years, we may look back and say, oh, the Dodgers really could use Tyrone Lorenzo right now. But at the moment, and am forgetting the best pitcher who was traded. Uh, it, it's I I couldn't believe it when Robert Murray tweeted that that was the full trade. I was like, okay, Bert must be wrong. There must be more names trickling in. But nope, that was the whole trade. It felt like they added an extra name the other day in, in Noah Miller and the other trade, and then it felt like maybe they were missing a name here. But you know what? It, the Dodgers got it done. They got the best pitcher traded at the deadline, and. You know, it was exciting in the moment. Like, it's one of those where the last couple of years we haven't quite had that excitement at the deadline um, and, you know, maybe even a little bit jaded off the fact of, of losing to the Padres the year before that and then, you know, losing to the Braves the year before that. And it, it just was a little bit different. But this was genuinely exciting. You know that the Dodgers can – you know now – you can bank on guys coming back, but you don't necessarily – you still need Mookie Betts and hopefully Max Muncy to come back for sure. But 
on the pitching side, like if Yamamoto doesn't make it back, you now have a capable guy there to slot in number two. And then you, you see who what else kind of goes out the rest of the way in terms of who pitches any other postseason games. But you have that locked in. You got the arm. You know, you give yourself a little bit of breathing room in the sense of the rotation. You give yourself a little bit of breathing room in the sense of the bullpen with Michael Kopech. And then the Dodgers also picked up. Kevin Kiermeyer, which we'll talk about a little bit more in the next segment. But yeah, for for Jack Flaherty, you know, last year he got traded at the deadline, didn't quite work out, but he was a little bit different pitcher last year. He did work on some stuff and he's been really good. He doesn't walk a lot of guys. He does get a lot of strikeouts that usually plays well in October. And then, you know, to wrap it all up, he's from LA. Like he he grew up in LA. He's from here. And his mom's already posted on Twitter a picture of him uh in Dodger gear from from back in the day. So that's funny. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. You know, we got it with Tyler Glasnow in the offseason, get to come home play for his hometown team. You know, same for for Flaherty here. You know, maybe same for Max Fried in the offseason. We'll see. But it's, uh, yeah, it's coming into today, we knew the Dodgers needed to add a starting pitch. We would have loved for them to also add uh, Brent Rooker. But, you know, in the end, not every trade deadline can be an A+. Uh, in fact, I don't know if there's such a thing as an A-plus trade deadline. Um, but this was about as close to an A as you can get, uh, you know, when you understand that there's some A's that are 94% and some A's that are 98%, you know? Yeah, exactly. So it was, you know, uh, being in, involved in like some other Dodger chats, it, it was one of those where, you know, you wait till the end and kind of figure it out. And, you know, everything else before that is just kind of, you're just killing time by maybe complaining a little bit. And, People and, were uh, melting down. <laughs> yeah, it was. So, huh. Yeah. So, but the Dodgers got it done and the Dodgers are a better team than they were a couple of days ago. And, you know, it, it's one of those things where you look at every other team that's maybe going to compete for with the Dodgers in the national league, you know, the Phillies swapped out and they got Austin Hayes to kind of put tune out there in the outfield, but they didn't necessarily get, too much better. The Padres did pick up Tanner Scott. Their back of the bullpen does look pretty strong, but you know, they got did pick up Martin Perez, but you don't, you know, the Padres still have been kind of inconsistent throughout this season. And so the Dodgers, but the Dodgers just had a better hot streak in the in between all that. And the Dodgers have a higher ceiling and a higher floor than the than the Padres do. Uh 